Insurance coverage. Hey, lots of questions many times arise as to what's covered, what's not. It produces lots of litigation, and that takes us to this week's case. Involves real people, real case. A little bit of an unusual situation. Involves a number of police officers who, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, found it necessary to confront a man who then began holding himself up in his home. He was accused of various crimes. The man who holding himself up in his home began to fire upon the police officers. Gunfight began to ensue. Lots of bullets flying all around. It is dark. Nobody knows exactly what's happening, but in the midst of all of this, one of the police officers, a guy by the name of Craig Burkholz, gets shot and killed. Well, following an investigation after the apprehension of the man that had been holding himself up, well, it was determined that he, the guy that had instituted the standoff, was responsible for the death of Officer Burkholz. In addition to being subjected to criminal action, as to be anticipated, the wife of the slain officer, Ashley Burkholz, brought a civil action, a civil action against the man contending that he was responsible for the death of her husband and looking for money damages to reimburse her for her loss, her grief, her suffering, the loss of his income. Well, the man's insurance company jumped up and said, wait a second, wait a second, the insurance policy doesn't apply. Maybe he's responsible, but the insurance doesn't apply because insurance doesn't apply if it's an intentional act. And that is an exclusion that exists under all negligent insurance coverage, coverage that's intended to provide for reimbursement should someone engage in a negligent act, whether it's using an automobile or whether it's something that takes place as a result of any act that would be covered under homeowner's coverage. And since the insurance company was arguing, hey, no coverage here, well, the case had to go forward. So. Ashley Burkholz, through her attorneys, argues, wait, you know what? This was taking place at night. Lots of activity going on, bullets flying all over the place. We contend that while it was later proven that this guy did, in fact, shoot my husband, he did not intend to shoot him. It was simply an effort to try and scare off the police officers and prevent them from apprehending him. He didn't intend to actually kill my husband. Therefore, his act of shooting outside his home and trying to keep the police officers away was not, in this instance, an intentional act. It was a negligent act when he actually killed somebody. Sure, he intended to shoot out the door, shoot out the windows, all of that kind of stuff, but he didn't intend to kill anybody. And that happened, unfortunately, in an unintended manner. Granted, he shouldn't have been shooting, but it happened in an unintended manner. Therefore, it's a negligent act, and the insurance coverage applies. Well, at the trial court level, the court looked at both arguments, heard from the insurance company, heard from Ashley Burkholz, the widow of the slain officer, and the court came away saying, sorry, Ashley, we find that when the guy shot your husband, it was an intentional act, and therefore the intentional act exclusion applies. No coverage. Well, she took it up on appeal, took it up on appeal to an appellate court in the state of Wisconsin. There the appellate court also looked at the same arguments and came away with the same decision. They found that when the bad guy was beginning to shoot, that it was his intent definitely to shoot, that was unequivocal, and it was his intent that the bullets, in fact, did produce harm to the officers. That's what he was trying to do. And when he killed an officer, it was an intentional act, and the insurance company is not at fault here, is not liable for these injuries, for that death. Okay. So what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? This seems to be pretty straightforward, doesn't it? I mean, the fact that some guy is shooting out his house and is trying to hit police officers, or at least trying to scare them away, that that intentional conduct is going to be excluded by an insurance company. I don't think anybody has a whole lot of problems with that. But you know what? This analysis of whether something's intentional or not intentional is a big deal in the law 
when many times people are saying that it was a negligent act. Think about this. Think about a little different case. Think about a case in which two people are having a very frank and vigorous discussion at the top of a staircase, and one person looks at the other and says, you know what, you are wrong, and hits him on the shoulder, just to make the point. The guy loses his balance, falls down the staircase, gets badly injured. He will contend, the guy that fell down the stairs, that the guy that touched him on the shoulder did not intend to push him down the stairs, but in fact, it was just a very emphatic point he was making in the argument when he touched him on the shoulder. Well, was that an intentional act or wasn't it an intentional act? And that's what the law many times has to figure out from the facts as they exist. And there are various forms of analysis that are used. The point that we make in this case is a very simple point, and that point is, if an act is truly intentional and it causes harm, there will not be insurance coverage. But if there is any question that the act really did not intend to cause harm, but was simply an act that in some way inadvertently produced harm, such as touching a guy at the top of a staircase and he losing balance, falling down the stairs, well then, there's a question of fact, a question of fact. And when there's a question of fact, then it goes generally to a jury. And then the jury needs to determine, did the guy who produced the harm, in fact, intend to cause the harm, or was it simply an act that was done without the intent to cause harm? Well, we bring you this case, as we bring you cases every week, so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.